Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the risk return trade off, which comes up in bargaining environments with incomplete information. So, to motivate this, think about last lecture where we looked at the ultimatum game. And in that ultimatum game, everyone knew everything that was relevant to the interaction. So, both the government and the rebel group knew about their own costs for fighting, about the other side's costs for fighting, and the relative likelihood of victory should bargaining break down. In contrast, in this lecture, we're going to see when there's asymmetric uncertainty or incomplete information about the probability of victory. We could have done this with uncertainty about the costs of fighting, but I think doing the probability of victory is a little bit more intuitive because this represents a situation, for example, where the government is sitting down at the bargaining table and doesn't know whether the rebel group is popular or not, whereas the rebel group does know whether it's popular or not. And in that sort of situation, the rebel group is at a stark advantage because it knows how well it will fare in the war, and so it knows how resolute it should be at the bargaining table, whereas you're in the dark as the government, and you have to make a best guess, given the fact that you're uncertain about these sorts of things. So again, we're looking at a situation where one side knows its probability of victory, and the other side doesn't. And we're making it the government be the side that's uncertain. The rebel group is more certain about their probability of victory. And to preview what we're going to see here, well, we're going to see what is known as the risk-return trade-off. So broadly, when you're in the dark and you're in this bargaining situation, you can adopt an aggressive stance or you can adopt a conservative stance. If you're aggressive, you're going to make a lot of demands and you're going to make small concessions to the other side. This has a strength and it has a weakness. The strength here is that whenever that aggression works, whenever you are making a small offer to the other side and demanding a large amount of stuff through the peaceful settlement, when that works, you're going to be very happy because you're going to be getting a lot of stuff. But there's a risk here. And the risk is that whenever you guess wrong, whenever you make a very aggressive offer and the other, side, the other side says, no, I'm going to reject that and fight a war, you're stuck paying the costs of war. So there's a risk here in that you will get a war thrown against you more frequently the more aggressive you are, but the return on that risk is that whenever the other side accepts, you're going to get a large share of the peaceful settlement. The other option is a little bit more straightforward. Here, if you're conservative, you're going to be demanding less of the good. You're going to be more generous with your offer, giving the other side more stuff through a peaceful settlement. And that's going to make the other side more likely to accept. But this comes at a cost to you. And that cost is that you have to pay the other side a lot to buy that sort of higher chance of not reaching a war outcome. So when you're sitting down at the bargaining table with that uncertainty, a smart decision is going to weigh the relative risks to the relative rewards of an aggressive offer and see whether that's better than just making a conservative offer. All right, so that's the preview of the results. Let's get to the model. So in this model, the government is going to make an offer to the rebel group, which the rebel group accepts or rejects. So this is very similar to what we saw last time. The government makes an ultimatum offer to the rebel group. The rebel group accepts or rejects. Accepting implements that settlement. Rejecting ends up with war. Now, the rebel group could either be strong or it could be weak. We're going to represent that the probability of the rebel group being weak is probability Q, and the probability that the rebel group is strong is probability 1 minus Q. So the rebel group knows whether it's weak or strong, but the government just knows the relative likelihood of each of those cases. And to model one side being stronger than the other with this weak rebel type, if you're a weak rebel and you fight a war, you're going to win that war with probability PR. But if you're strong, you're going to win the war with probability PR prime, where PR prime is greater than PR. So essentially, if you're a stronger rebel, you're more likely to win the war. The costs are going to remain the same here. So if you fight a war, then as the government, you pay a cost CG. And if you're a rebel group, regardless of whether you're weak or strong, just for simplicity, we're going to say that the rebel group pays a cost CR. So again, the big difference here is that the rebel group knows whether it's weak or strong when it makes the accept-reject decision, but the government, when it makes its offer, doesn't know whether the rebel group is weak or strong. Now, as before, the way to solve this sort of situation is to start at the end and work your way backward. 
So we can calculate the war payoffs very easily. I'm going to erase that step. I'm just going to focus on what happens if you're a rebel group. If you're a rebel group, you need to figure out what you're going to do if you're strong, and you need to figure out what you're going to do if you are weak. So let's start with the weak rebel's decision. Well, your payoff for war is PR minus CR. And so if you're receiving an offer sized X greater than or equal to PR minus CR, you are willing to accept that offer. You're going to reject anything that's less than that because you can get more from war than by accepting that smaller offer. So if you're the rebel group, you accept if X is greater than or equal to PR minus CR and you reject otherwise. Well, it's a similar situation with the strong rebels. The only difference with the strong rebels is that the strong rebels win with probability PR prime. So their payoff for war is PR prime minus CR, which means they are accepting X greater than or equal to PR prime minus CR. All right, that takes care of the rebels decision. Now we need to think about the government's decision. This could seem very complicated because the government can offer anything between zero and one, that is an infinite space of numbers. There are infinitely many numbers between 0 and 1 because you can keep expanding that decimal outward. So there are a huge number of offers that the government needs to consider. But I'm going to make a claim, and this is actually a true claim, that the optimal offer for the government isn't a huge continuum of numbers. It's going to be just two. There are only two possibilities. The optimal offer is to offer either x equal to pr prime minus cr or to offer x equal to pr minus cr. And I want to show this visually what this means. So what's going to happen here is you might make the offer PR minus CR. That is the amount that the rebel group that is weak is willing to accept. Or you might make the amount PR prime minus CR. You might offer the amount PR prime minus CR. And this is the minimum amount that the rebel group needs to be willing to accept the offer. But notice that as the government, again, you don't know whether the rebel group is weak or strong when you make this offer. So if you make the larger offer of PR prime minus CR, that's the conservative route, then the weak rebel group is also going to accept. Whereas in contrast, if you make the smaller offer, if you're aggressive in your bargaining stance and you offer PR minus CR, just the weak type accepts and the strong type of rebels reject. Okay, so why is it the case that you're only going to be offering PR minus CR or PR prime minus CR? Why isn't it the case that you're not going to be, or why is it the case that you're not going to be offering any other amount? Well, let's think about what happens if you were to make a settlement offer of X less than PR minus CR. So that's to the left of PR minus CR, as you see on your screen there. There's the X. Why is this not optimal? Well, the rebel groups will receive, if they're weak, PR minus CR if they reject and fight, and if they're strong, PR prime minus CR. Either way, the rebel group is going to receive more from rejecting the offer and fighting than it would by accepting that offer. So neither one of the sides is going to accept here. They're both going to reject and they're both going to fight a war, which means you as the government are assuredly going to be getting your war payoff in this situation. Well, if you compare that to offering X equal to PR minus CR, which I've represented with that red line for X prime, now not everyone is rejecting. Before everyone rejected, here if you offer X prime equal to PR minus CR, it's still going to be true that the strong rebel group will reject that offer. So in whatever probability, whatever percentage of the time you're facing off against the strong type, you're going to be getting your war payoff still in that case. But you're going to drastically improve your payoff in the situation where you are facing off against the weak type. Because unlike before where the weak type was rejecting, the weak type will accept your offer here because it's going to, going to be getting as much as it would get from war. So the weak type accepts. And in that situation, you're no longer paying your costs of war, but rather you're extracting the benefit that's created by not having those costs of war be paid. So whatever probability of the time you're facing off against the weak type, you actually do better in this situation by offering PR minus CR. So in other words, offering X prime can only provide benefits to you, X prime equal to PR minus CR, and it can't actually hurt you. So that's why offering X prime is better than offering some X less than PR minus CR. Okay, so that rules out everything to the left of PR minus CR. What about anything to the right of PR prime minus CR? Can any of these be optimal?
Well, if you remember from last time, when I made the argument that you don't want to essentially leave any extra stuff to the other side that you don't have to, this is going to be the same thing here. So notice that this offer is to the right of both of the rebel groups types of war payoffs. So the weak type is receiving PR minus CR. So offering X is more than that. And of course, the government, or rather the strong rebel group is receiving PR prime minus CR if it fights. So by offering X greater than that, again, the rebel group is going to accept in that case. So both sides accept in this case. But this can't be optimal because if you're going to make an acceptable offer to both sides, you want to minimize that size of the acceptable offer. In other words, think about X prime compared to X here. Under X prime, both sides are going to, or both types of the rebel group are going to accept regardless of their, whether they're weak or strong. But this time, instead of receiving everything to the right of X, you're receiving everything to the right of X prime. And everything to the right of X prime is more more than everything to the right of X. So you would be better off offering slightly less to the rebel groups, knowing that they're going to be accepting here and keeping more from yourself. But that's also true with X double prime compared to X prime. You're going to receive more because both sides are going to accept or both types of the rebel group are going to accept here and you're going to receive more of the peaceful settlement. And it's true with X triple prime compared to X double prime and so forth. And you can go all the way over until you reach, of course, uh, X, P, or X equal to PR prime minus CR. So that's why anything greater than PR prime minus CR can't be optimal. Which leaves us one other case in between PR minus CR and PR prime minus CR. So why can't these be optimal? Well, think about what happens if you make this particular offer. This is where you actually see a difference in what the two, two types of rebel groups are going to do. Here, this is enough to buy off the weak type. The weak type will not receive as much from war as the strong type. So here, the weak type is actually willing to accept this offer because it's going to get less through war. Whereas the strong type is going to receive more from war if it were to reject your offer here. So here you see the strong type rejecting and the weak type accepting. But given that the strong type is going to accept and the weak type is going to reject, you should be shrinking your offer. Why is that? Compare X prime to X. Under X prime, you still have the strong side rejecting, but whatever probability of the time you're playing against the weak type, the weak type is still going to accept that offer and you're going to receive more from the peaceful settlement in that case. So with X, you receive everything to the right of that against the weak type. And that's going to be smaller than everything to the right of X prime, again, if you're facing the weak type. So again, similar to a couple of times before when we were looking at PR minus CR, or anything less than PR minus CR, here you receive no risk by shrinking your offer by a little bit because you're still going to have the strong side reject you. That's going to be the same payoff regardless, but you'll get more when you're playing against the weak type. So that's why nothing between PR minus CR and PR prime minus CR can be optimal. That leaves us with just the two options that I talked about before. The claim is true that either X equal to PR prime minus CR is going to be the best or X equal to PR minus CR is going to be the best. And now because we eliminated a vast continuum, an infinitely many number of types or infinitely many number, infinitely large number, uh, infinite number of, of settlements that you could have made because we got rid of that infinite number and we've reduced it to just two, I'll eventually get this right. Because we've reduced it to just two, we can compare those two offers and see which one pays you more as the government. So option one is to offer PR prime minus CR. Option two is to offer PR minus CR, which is going to be best for you. Well, if you offered PR prime minus CR, this is the amount that both types are willing to accept. You're offering a large amount. So the strong type is definitely going to accept. And because the weak type is actually weaker than the strong type, of course, the weak type is going to be accepting as well. So both sides accept under this condition. And under this condition, you're going to receive the remainder of the bargain for sure, regardless of whether the strong type or weak type is actually what you're facing off against. And that remainder is one minus PR plus CR. Your other option is to go aggressive and offer PR minus CR. In this case, you have the weak type accepting and the strong type rejecting. The strong type can do better from war, the weak type can't.
So against the weak type, you receive one minus PR plus CR. That is the remainder of the settlement offer that you gave. And you receive that with probability Q. Remember that Q is the probability that the rebel group is a weak type. So with probability Q, you receive the remainder of the settlement, which is one minus PR plus CR. With complementary probability, or with probability 1 minus Q, you're facing off against the strong type, which means you receive your war payoff against the strong type. So you receive 1 minus PR prime, because you're playing against the strong type. The strong type is winning more frequently, so you're winning with probability 1 minus PR prime, and you're paying your war cost CG. So we know the war payoffs, and we know the overall payoff for offering PR minus CR. We know the overall payoff for offering PR prime minus CR. Let's just compare the two. Specifically, you're willing to gamble. You're willing to make that aggressive offer, which sometimes forces the strong type to reject, if that payoff that we saw on the previous slide is greater than the payoff that we saw two slides ago when you were making the conservative offer. And if you do some algebraic manipulation, you eventually wind up with the expression that Q is greater than CG plus CR over PR prime minus PR plus CG. So we'll do a little bit more interpretation of this later on in the next lecture. But for now, what that means is that if the likelihood that R is sufficiently high, or rather the likelihood that R is weak, the rebel group is weak, is sufficiently high, then you're willing to make the smaller offer, that aggressive offer, which sometimes gets rejected. So war occurs here with positive probability because the other side might actually be strong. You guessed wrong, and now you are paying the cost of fighting as a result of that. But this third bullet point should make sense. If I'm really certain, I'm close to certain that you're weak, then I'm going to accept that there's some chance that I'm wrong and I'm going to get my war payoff because I'm very sure that you're weak. I'm going to be getting a whole lot out of that aggressive offer. And so I'm willing to make that aggressive offer when I really do think you're weak, knowing that I might actually be surprised some chance, some probability, some percentage of the time and end up in a war. Last thing I want to say here is that as the weak type, you can actually come off better than you would be if the government knew that you were weak. So if the government knew that you were weak, in other words, you're just playing a basic ultimatum game from or identical to last time, then you would receive PR minus CR if the government knew that you were weak. But if you are very unlikely to be weak, if Q is less than that critical threshold from the previous slide, then the government is going to make a large offer. It's going to make the conservative offer. It's going to go with the conservative option and make the large offer that both of you are going to accept. So this is the amount that the strong type is willing to accept because the government wants to buy off both types here. This means that the weak type is actually doing very well because it's receiving more than it would expect to if it fought a war. It's receiving the amount that the strong type would receive if it fought a war. The weak type is doing better here because it's blending in with that strong type, and it's receiving the concessions that the strong type would be receiving from the government if the government knew it was a strong type. So that's how you mitigate this uncertainty with incomplete information where one side knows something about war and the other side doesn't. Join me next time when we analyze this and interpret this result a little bit more. Take care.